And good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pumps and Politics. As always, we are so happy to enjoy this Monday morning with you. Mondays are hard. Mondays are rough. It's a little rainy. It's a little windy. But no doubt we are all up. We are all out being productive or we are at home doing what we need to do. But nonetheless, we love hanging out with you. And we have a full show. I know we say that every week. But every week is the truth. I wouldn't lie to you. We have a full show and some good stuff. We're talking some good stuff. It's a huge week. A lot of that we're about to talk to. But let me just go ahead. First of all, y'all know what time it is. It's time to say hello to Janine Davis. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, Harriet. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? You had a full weekend. Oh, yes, I did. Socialite. Oh, my gosh. I wasn't. I wasn't. Although I have about almost 200 likes on Facebook for my dress. Oh, excuse Yeah, which was very cute. By the, the way, gala. she went to the Fisk Gala, everyone, yes. as we know. Dr. Williams was inaugurated yes, uh, he last was. week, and they had the scholarship gala raised. Mm-hmm. I saw $524,000. Yes. yes, it was awesome. good. It was really That's great. Huge. Nashville came out, so I was really really proud of that so we had a lot of mayor dean was there um had a lot of really great people from the city and terrence howard was there with his cute self um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i told my husband i found out late friday i said yeah well lee daniels won't be able to be there but terrence right. howard is going to be there yes. and so he was not too happy about that he was like yeah because i know you like right, right so yes he was there so, and kim whitley was great who's she's a, a graduate alum. by the yes. way she's a fiscal alum and then our friend jonathan martin did a good job as yeah. Yes, well, Jonathan Martin. They both MC. So they did it was a it was a great weekend and both uh Dr. Williams and the First Lady, I think, enjoyed the love from the community. Um mm-hmm. and I know Dr. Williams was tired that far. I mean that Saturday night because sure. he was out in the lobby and he just like sat down in one of the lounge chairs waiting on his wife before they, <laughs> before they <laughs> left. So he had a full weekend. A yeah. very full week, no mm-hmm. doubt. They had uh, several events. Uh, during the week, including the investiture, yes. where he was officially, um, I guess, put in place or the, the investiture uh, inauguration. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's officially official. Right. He's officially <laughs> official. Thanks to the investiture. He was given so, the keys I don't know to the university. Official, but, yeah, there you go. <laughs> right. Got the keys. All right. Yes. There we go. <laughs> um, commemorative keys. But mm-hmm. uh, And we had them on last week, and we had a lot of fun talking with him. So we did. a very bright future mm-hmm. ahead for Fisk, and mm-hmm. the city no doubt will be looking for that. Um, but yeah, a lot going on, and it is also election week. Early yes. elect, early voting, early voting begins this Wednesday. Week. Starts Wednesday, so definitely want to get out and vote. Also, don't forget on Wednesday morning. There you go. Seven thirty. Seven thirty. We need all women, women to show up at the polls uh, to vote. Uh, it's being sponsored by several different groups, but one in particular, the One Hundred Black Women, mm-hmm. um, are sponsoring an early voting get out the vote for all women to show up at Howard School. Um, um, as solidarity and to wear black and if you're part of any other organizations just kind of wear your accent color or pin for that but um, yes we do we need to come out in numbers and support all candidates that are running specifically we've got a lot of women running for candidates yes. and we have one of those uh, lady candidates here today she's going to be here on the second half of the show yes. uh, Diane Lance who is running for district uh-huh. attorney and if elected she will be Davidson County's first, first. That's female right. district attorney yep. So we have history here. Maybe, hope, uh, let me not let me not speak it. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm saying if she is, yes. she was on Pumps of Politics. Yes, I'm she just was. Saying. She was on Pumps of Politics. She was on the show. So we're good. She was here. <laughs> um, and then, of course, we have some other politically related events. We have Pancakes in Politics happening this Saturday at 730. Uh, that is hosted by our parent company, the Tennessee Tribune. Mm-hmm. And that's where we will be talking with the lady candidates who are running for judge, several of them. Yes. Um, in historical numbers. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're very excited about that. Regardless who wins or loses, they open some doors, no doubt. And I was going to say, too, if you need rides to the polls, um, please check out websites um, of various candidates are offering rides to the polls. So just check out whomever you are planning to support. Check their website out. Um, Take someone to the poll as well. If you have a family member or elderly person in your neighborhood, make sure they get there and have all of their credentials to vote as well. We don't want yes, we don't want anything to hinder anyone from voting in this election. No excuses. And I put on Facebook because I'm, well, I'm not recently married. I'm two years now, but I finally, I know I've changed my name everywhere else, my last name, but (laughs) I finally did it on my driver's license. And then I don't know where I've been. And I I learned over the weekend, I have to go to the social security office to get it changed. 
on my social security card as well. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of, I, I'm kind of yeah. changing my identity, but that's yeah. okay. <laughs> I know. That it's hard. It's hard for a lot of independent women. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm all right with that, though. I'm okay. So just make sure all the steps that you need to make, um, make those. And one of the things, just for you all's FYI, remember we said you have to be registered 30 days out from when you're going to vote. So if it was April 16th, you had to be registered by March 16th. Uh, if you're going to vote on Election Day, which is May 6th, you had to have been registered by April 6th. Now, that is for new registrants only, which I found this out because I was panicking when I went to get my name changed at the Election Commission. I was like, I made it just in time. She was like, oh, you're fine. You've, you've been registered for years. So you could have come down the day before or the day of to register, right. you know, change that. And so I was like, oh, okay. So just for you all's FYI, mm-hmm. um, new registrants only 30 days out, but any and everybody else going. Get your stuff taken care of. Yes, please do. All right. We have a few headlines uh, that we're going to mention. I'm going to get into that a little bit later. Uh, We do have an update on um, the school stabbing from last week. That was in, uh, was it Pennsylvania? Was it Pennsylvania? I believe it was. Let me look that up. Yeah. In Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Uh And then um, overnight, uh, well, yesterday, uh, there was the shooting at the uh, Jewish synagogue. So we'll be talking Mm -hmm. a little bit about that and what's what's going on. Um, They do have... Uh, suspect uh, that was named. And then we're going to talk about this bill that is making movement, Janine, where you do not have to have a permit to carry a gun. Which I'm a little concerned. A lot concerned. Yes, a lot concerned. Yeah, it's it's made its way through the Senate already. Uh, No doubt there's a lot of talk about that. You know, we are in a a state where a lot of folks carry guns for hunting purposes and things like that. But there are a lot of other issues related Uh to that. We're going to jump into that a little bit later. But Right now, uh, there's a very big uh, topic on the table that people are talking about. We have two ladies who are in the studio with us right now. Uh, The AMP and the Bus Rapid Transit System. Uh, It is designed to, it's it's not in effect yet, but it's designed to make commuting more efficient, cut down on traffic, and really give commuters um, an easier uh, route mode of travel and to get them to and from quicker, help keep the uh, environment cleaner, safer. That's that's the proposal, that's the plan, that's the promise. But there uh, is a group right now that says, while it's all great, it doesn't necessarily include everyone. And that's kind of where they're coming from. But we have in, uh, in the studio with us this morning, Diane Neal and Margot Chambers. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. There. Thank you for having us. Sure, thank you for coming in. And we, we chatted a little bit before the show. And very briefly, if one of you ladies could take this, briefly, what is the AMP? Just what is it? Well, there are a couple of ways to answer that. So we'll just start in on the first way to answer it, which is that as it is currently planned, that is the original plan, it's a 7.1 mile bus, regular bus, that would be placed on dedicated lanes from St. Thomas Hospital on the western terminus all the way over to East Literature High School Mm -hmm. in East Nashville. Uh, there would be yeah, five parking rides, That's five what, or six parking yes. rides, uh, and loading stations at various places along the corridor um, w- would allow people to, they would cross the street and stand at a loading station until the bus came and, and they would were in the middle of the street. Uh, I listened to your description of it, and you are exactly right. That is the promise, and that is the marketing. But our research, and we have done our research first from their own documents, the okay. documents that the MTA yes. provided, um, created, and sent to the FTA. Um those documents reveal that that promise is very unlike what the AMP really is. Um, and, Which is and, kind of where you all's effort has evolved from. Correct? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Really, uh, we sort of got surprised by it, and it was our effort to find out why didn't the community as a whole, why, why wasn't the entire community part of the original discussion before it suddenly just appeared? And that lack of transparency has been a big problem for us. It's actually been a big problem for us in getting documents uh, from the MTA and from the mayor's office. And this isn't a cheap project. I saw um, no. a price tag, I believe it's 75 Seven million. Is it 75 million? Mm-hmm. It, it, they're Overall. claiming the whole 
cost is, would come to $175 million, and that is only capital cost. Okay. Okay. Which is what is to build it. That's not including the maintenance every year. Okay. The operations. Project. And, and the key part of that, since you mentioned the money, is the local government still has not told us what the, the dedicated source of funding will be. I saw somewhere um, where there's a mix of, of federal funding, of course, state, and, and maybe some grants. Is that what you all are aware of? So is that still a concern that that money may not come, or you just want to know a little bit more specifically where it's coming from? Well, I think that's a great deal of money to run a single transit system that actually their documents show will capture very few riders. And it just goes east to west. Right. But the package that they've put together, since you ask, um, the way it's broken down is they were hoping to get $75 million from the federal government through a small starts grant program. Right. They say they are going to get $35 million from the state. And every single key person in the state has said n- no. No, you're not. But their application at the federal level still reflects $35 million from the state. And some, But some has been released. Some federal monies have been released, correct? Actually, no. No. Um, no. Um, the mayor has made announcements saying that the AMP has received a federal um, announcement in the president's budget right. for $27 million. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that is not a guarantee that we've actually passed any environmental regulations or we don't even have a capital grant application created at the federal level. So it's a bit premature to imply that any funds have been released for this. So it's saying you all can get this contingent upon this, which... Well, the, the, the local government, the way the federal government expects these projects to work, these grants to work, is that the local government does a lot of the legwork ahead of time and is going to sponsor and pay for most of the cost. And then they do need local support, which is considered state support from a federal uh, viewpoint. And then once those two things are confirmed and can be verified – then the federal government will consider whether they want to release that $75 million. Got it. But they yeah. also have to meet a number of other regulations, okay. like environmental regulations mm-hmm. and there traffic. Are f- there are 45 pages in yeah. the Federal Register detailing the specific requirements that a project must meet before federal money can be granted. Mm-hmm. And we are still sitting in the very first step, which is project development, without a completed application. Yeah, entry into project development. We haven't even exited project development. So we have a, a long ways to go. So we do. Well, we're going to uh, go ahead and, and uh, get ready for our break here. In just a second, I know Janine uh, looks like you, mm-hmm. I think, had a question or wanted to jump in mm-hmm. there. And the ladies are giving us AMP 101 this morning. So for any of you uh, listeners out there, if you had any questions, any confusion, or just wanted to know more about this AMP project, the bus rapid transit system. We're talking about it this morning and we're answering a number of questions. And of course, we want to make sure that you are always informed from both sides of everything so you can formulate your own opinion. But this morning we have ladies who are leading this effort um, to, uh, I guess, stop the AMP kind of where it is and and let's kind of reconfigure some things. And after the break, we're going to talk a little more. I know, again, Janine has uh, some points to throw in there also, but uh, Diane is on a board where hopefully uh, she will have some uh, some influence there, and we're going to talk a little bit about that right after the break. Stay tuned. This is Namdi Asamoah. I play football for the Philadelphia Eagles, but what I do off the field with United Way might be more important. I'm a volunteer tutor and mentor. Why? Because over a million kids a year drop out of school, and that's not okay. It takes 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes about the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a child becoming one or the other could be me, or it could be you. Studies show that if we get to these kids earlier, their chances are better, and kids who read well by third grade are more likely to graduate. So join me in United Way. Suit up and take the pledge. Become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor. 
Because when a child succeeds, we all succeed. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Take the pledge at unitedway.org. Brought to you by United Way, the Ad Council, and the National Football League. I'm so glad we left that stupid party. No joke. Hey, baby, are you an overdue library book? Because you got fine written all over you. Oh, barf. <laughs> what about that girl with the hoop earrings? Ridiculous. When she was dancing... Megan, on... look out. Look out! <laughs> Oh. oh my god, Becky. Becky, are you okay? My arm. I think it's broken. Can you bend it? It's already bent in the wrong direction. I can't believe this. I'm so sorry. I only had a few drinks. I was just buzzed. Really? Just buzzed? Yeah, I swear. Well, in that case, my arm is fine. Ah, that's better. You're really okay? You're serious, Becky? No genius. I'm not serious. My arm, it hurts. Buzzed driving. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. Buzzed driving is drunk driving. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, the Ad Council, and this station. For real news, big headlines, and the latest in political talk, tune in every Monday for Pumps and Politics at 8 a.m. Central. And welcome back to Pumps and Politics. We're talking the AMP, Stop the AMP, and all that you need to know about the transportation system here in the metropolitan Nashville area. Janine, uh, just before the break, I know you wanted to jump in and get a little bit of this. What uh, did you have to say? Uh, well, two questions. So um, I know the AMP has a dedicated route. Number one is one of the things that they're talking about. They want to go, like you said, from east to west corridor of the city. What concerns do you all have about that? I um, actually live on the west side of town. And so, of course, when I'm coming into town, I'm seeing the stop amp signs along the way of Harding Road and things of that nature. And that's a very congested area, even on a regular day. <laughs> Anything going Harding Road towards St. Thomas, if you're coming from Bellevue, can be very congested all day long. It matters not the time of the day. So um, talk to us about the route and just kind of what you all see as an issue with the route and maybe just kind of, again, what the, I don't know if it's the opposing side, if you will call it, what they say would be an advantage to the route. Um, and then the other piece is I wanted to ask the question of, is there any room to re reconstruct the route? Um, I've attended a couple of political forums um, and also some other community forums. And a concern that's been raised is, is this actually a good route overall, considering the how many people use public transportation don't live necessarily within those corridors? Um, that's a, 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 let's see. It, I know it's a loaded start, question, I'll I'm just, sorry. <laughs> I'll just jump in. Sure. Because I think you're really getting to, why was this route selected? Mm -hmm. um, Again, we have had a difficult time obtaining documents, but through Freedom of Information Act, we found that their own documents reveal that, in fact, the, the presence of the AMP on this corridor will increase congestion at some already very defective intersections. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you come in, you know the ones I'm talking mm -hmm. about, starting mm -hmm. with that incredible mm -hmm. mix-up of cars at Harding, Woodmont, and Whitebridge. Yes, it's okay. horrible. Yeah. Uh, and then another one is the 31st and West End. Mm -hmm. Their documents reveal that taking up two and a half lanes on that corridor are only going to make congestion worse. Not because people selfishly want to hold on to their cars, but you've got the emergency vehicles that connect in that midtown area from St. Thomas West into the Vanderbilt Centennial, mm -hmm. St. Thomas Midtown, you've got emergency vehicles that have to travel along there. There's a fire hall that sits there. When we first began looking at this route, we would say to the engineers, so how do the emergency vehicles deal with the presence of the amp in the middle of these mm -hmm. lanes? Oh, and they can't turn left mm -hmm. like they used to. You know, oh, wow. if you're in an emergency situation, you want that vehicle to be able to get there and get you wherever you need to be right. in a timely fashion. Mm -hmm. So I, I just that's one issue that you touched on. We have been told, and everything we have found, is that the sole reason the East-West Corridor was selected 
is that it's the only corridor that came anywhere close to having the population density to meet federal requirements. So it was like density alone led to the selection of the route. Well, that's a local decision, too, and that's not really what the federal government likes to hear, but that's what we've done. And um, I'd like to also add that the dedicated lanes are really only on the west side of town. It goes from St. Thomas down to Fifth and Broadway. And then once it turns north on Fifth Avenue, it, it goes into a, a mixed-use lane, similar to what we know of today. And, um, and then there, is, there are a few roadblocks at, on Charlotte in front of the Music City um, center uh the the music city um bus, bus depot, depot uh-huh. and um and then again at in front of lp field they're going to have a, a transit station in the middle of the road there which um is is a traffic concern there's gonna be a lot of accidents there if you switch buses from regular traffic and then all of a sudden they have dedicated lanes to pick up people and <laughs> drop off people and then go back to the regular traffic um and that the MTA did tell the FTA that this would dramatically increase auto traffic on the west side of town because of the high percentage of auto ownership. Um, having density alone is not a reason to get people to get on the bus or, or any transit, actually. But auto ownership is an indication to the federal government that you're not going to have a whole lot of riders. Uh, there's a lot of talk about choice and mode share, and these are all technical terms about how many people generally will ride the bus um, and it, it's a lot of it has to do with um, income and access to a working automobile and density a lot of people you like new york city if there's a lot of people and not so much room for cars um, and or it's too expensive to own a car it's too expensive to park it because there's no place to park it um, so that's a concern that that we had well, that let me just jump in here because something that Margot just said you you really are getting to the question of what what brought our attention to it um, the fact that it, it i mean when i first learned about it in the summer of 2012 i called uh, any council person i could locate and said tell me about this bus project i've heard nothing and i consider myself a pretty well informed person i heard nothing in July of 2012. And here's the answer I got. Whatever you do, don't get involved. It's a done <laughs> deal. And I don't know really? about you ladies, yeah, wow. but because yeah, I've only too. known you a few minutes, yes. but I'll bet if somebody tells you something that you just learned about is a done deal, you're going to start finding yes, out some that's details. Right. Start digging. Well, mm-hmm. I call myself the research department. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, that, the research me, department. Yes. <laughs> so, so that that mystery, it, whichever way I ended up coming out, from yeah. my own opinion, that. That had to be resolved. And this mm-hmm. goes back to, I, I believe I was reading to about 2008, 2009, I believe, is when it kind of started, this, well, this effort. Well, that's and, what so. the MTA likes to say in their media releases. We found the community. Come on, you're the myth buster, Margo. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. What, what's going on? Well, <laughs> that's right. as Diane said, the community on the west side of town found, found out about this project uh, July of 2012 at the same meeting. That's where we met. Um and we'd heard about it, but um, nobody really, we just thought we, generally it wasn't well uh, appreciated. We listened politely, but said, thank you, but this isn't going to work for us. We don't ride the bus over here. Why are you spending all this time and effort? Please put it someplace else, basically, because we're trying to get around it. Most of the questions were how, how we're going to get across the street, because it's like a train going down the middle of the street. This isn't going to be uh, like it is today. It's it's going to be like two one-way streets where they put the dedicated lanes up. And um, and cross streets are going to have a, a big auto impact there too. Um, but the MTA has said that they've been talking about this for years and that it's in their 2009 master strategic plan, but that is not true. We've read that report and they wanted to extend the Gallatin bus route to Vanderbilt in the year 2025 and that was the closest thing they had in that plan to what the amp is today so um there really isn't and i mean people have been the mta who are a bunch of unelected officials at our city have discussed um, improving transit for a long time but specifically this route and how it's built and where it's built has only been going on for about a few years. I think so, the biggest concern, I'm sorry, but 
Yeah. But the, here's the concern citywide, and this is what we found as our numbers of, of, have joined us in questioning this, seeing if we could actually improve mass transit. Look at what's happening. $175 million capital cost at least going into one corridor when anybody mm-hmm. who drives around Nashville knows that you have got corridors, corridors all over. You know, it's mm-hmm. the hub and spoke uh, mm-hmm. geographical arrangement of our county. And it's fine to say, as they do, this is only the beginning. Really? We don't even know where the local piece of the Correct. funding's coming from mm-hmm. on this project. And they've already told us they're going to cut bus service on other routes, regular bus right. service, in order to, to keep pay for the it. maintenance cost of the amp and at to a reasonable level. And to also yep. think about for this end, and like you said, uh, Diane, this corridor at $175 million, to extend it to other areas because clearly if you drive – in Nashville to Gallatin Road, Murfreesboro Road, those are very congested right. areas. Those have populations of individuals who don't drive Correct. a lot because they can't afford right. cars. So that seems to be the area of need. Then that's another hundred and seventy five dollars, I'm sure, going to those areas to build it again. So yeah, that's a lot of money over time. That's billions of dollars for this project. And I'm all for mass transit. Right. Um but there's a I, bigger picture. Yeah, there's a right. bigger picture and yeah. And I guess again the question is when you when you ask the question of can you redesign the route what was the response um we, we have <laughs> which time <laughs> <laughs> well and do we have enough time she's like it's, it's too uh, much here here's here's the here's the way we look at this we believe that with a lot less than 175 million dollars that our city could improve transit in all sectors of the county. And we've put it out. I wish I had brought a copy, except, you know, you can't see it on radio. (laughs) But we call it Plan B. I mean, how unimaginative is that? (laughs) But it really is a system that would enhance express bus service, uh, typical of what you're finding on Gallatin and... uh, Access rides. Access rides. That kind of thing. Smaller. To improve bus service. An improved bus service ought to be able to break through the culture, if you will, of encouraging people to ride the bus. If you can actually get on the bus in an improved shelter with the the time sensor that tells you your bus will be here in three minutes um, and then get on a bus that can actually uh, change the signals to improve... You're likely to ride that bus. And Diane, let, let me uh, jump in here real quick because we have, I think, just maybe about a minute left. And I think it's important to mention that Mayor Dean, uh, I believe it was not long ago, was it just a few weeks ago, um, looks like, uh, named you to a citizen citizens advisory committee for the AMP. And <clears throat> you, along with several other people, looks like maybe about 20 or so from varying perspectives on the AMP uh, are a part of this committee to help really um, put the framework around it, uh, if you will. Um, so, and I want to ask you all very briefly, uh, just before we go into break, ultimately, what is your goal? We've discussed some issues, but what is the ultimate goal? Ultimately, we would like to see this particular project that devotes so much money to, to one corridor We would like to see that project brought back and really starting over with a project that considers how we improve mass transit around the county and, most importantly, regionally. If you've been on I-65, I-40, or I-24 early morning in the afternoon, you know we've got a regional problem that has to be dealt with. We do not believe that pouring this much money into a project that using their own numbers Mm -hmm. suggest will fail for lack of ridership. Right. Then our fear is that if we do the AMP, a disillusionment will set in with lack of ridership and the high subsidies it's going to cost to sustain it. And then you push back that political will and community interest in never having a discussion right. again. It'll we give credit to Mayor Dean for starting the first serious discussion about mass transit in years. So overall, let's kind of let's let's kind of start from scratch a little bit and, and make it a little bit better. Diane Neal, 
Margot Chambers, thank you all so much for being with thank us you. this morning and giving us uh, our AMP 101 or AMP for Dummies and helping <laughs> us <laughs> really kind of get very nice. briefed you. on everything. Thank you all so much, and we wish you all the best in your efforts. And, yes. you know, again, as we tell everyone, the door is always open. Mm -hmm. We love, we would love to have you come back at any time and just keep us posted on how everything is progressing. And so um, Margot has an announcement she wants to Oh, yes. I just wanted to remind everybody that there's a candidate forum tonight. Uh, it's from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Manna from Heaven Dinner Theater. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, it's tonight and tomorrow night. So please come out. I'm going to be there. I'm interested in seeing what's going on. Good. So thank Wonderful. you. Good. Good. Thank Good you so deal. much. Thank you, Saves, That's an announcement. I know. Right. <laughs> I'm going to bring that up. Love you all heard it. it. Margot said be there. Now be there. Yeah, we'll <laughs> be right back after the break. <laughs> thank you. Yes. For real news, big headlines, and the latest in political talk, tune in every Monday for Pumps and Politics at 8 a.m. Central. I'm so glad we left that stupid party. No joke. Hey, baby, are you an overdue library book? Because you got fine written all over you. Oh, barf. <laughs> what about that girl with the hoop earrings? Ridiculous. When she was dancing... Megan, I'm look out. Look out! <laughs> Oh my god, Becky. Becky, are you okay? My arm. I think it's broken. Can you bend it? It's already bent in the wrong direction. I can't believe this. I'm so sorry. I only had a few drinks. I was just buzzed. Really? Just buzzed? Yeah, I swear. Well, in that case, my arm is fine. Ah, that's better. You're really okay? You're serious, Becky? No, genius. I'm not serious. My arm, it hurts. Buzzed driving. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, the Ad Council, and this station. This is Namdi Asamoah. I play football for the Philadelphia Eagles, but what I do off the field with United Way might be more important. I'm a volunteer tutor and mentor. Why? Because over a million kids a year drop out of school, and that's not okay. It takes 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes about the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a child becoming one or the other could be me, or it could be you. Studies show that if we get to these kids earlier, their chances are better, and kids who read well by third grade are more likely to graduate. So join me in United Way. Suit up and take the pledge. Become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor, because when a child succeeds, we all succeed. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Take the pledge at unitedway.org. Brought to you by United Way, the Ad Council, and the National Football League. Just now, another kid dropped out of school. There's one every 20 seconds. Over 200 kids an hour. That adds up to nearly 5,000 kids every school day. If we do nothing, 3.5 million kids won't receive a diploma over the next four years. But there is someone who can change that. And that someone is you. United Way knows that kids who have a caring adult in their life are more likely to make it. So make a pledge. Tutor a child who needs help. Mentor a kid who needs someone on their side. Volunteer to read to children because the path to success or failure starts long before graduation day. And the difference between a graduate and a dropout could be you. Take the pledge to volunteer now at unitedway.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Today's a good day to grab your kids and hang out with them for an hour. Dance, walk, play a sport, or cook a healthy meal. Because just moving a little and eating better every day can help make you and your child healthier. Can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. We'll ball it up. Because we know how to hoop. We'll mess around. Because we know how to play. We'll drop it down. Because we know how to dance. We'll veg it up. We'll veg it up. Veg it up. Veg it up. Can we do it? 
Search We Can online to find doable tips and activities that you can use every day to keep you and your kids healthy. Remember, that's We Can. A message from the Ad Council, HHS, and NIH's We Can program. Welcome back to Compton Politics. We've got a lot going on today, everybody. We've definitely hit on a really big issue, and some of y'all probably been hearing about it, the Stop the Amp movement, uh, where the ladies are, are basically said, we don't want to stop it, we just want to revise it a little bit so it includes everyone and is more affordable and sustainable down the years um, moving forward as we consider the growth here in the Nashville mm-hmm. area where we're booming now, and, and it's, it's only going to... It's only going to grow. Uh, we did not, Janine, get a chance to touch on a few headlines, though. So I no. want to make sure we, we get those in, because that's what we do. Yes. Okay, we talk we politics. Talk about the headlines. And we talk yeah. headlines, all right? <laughs> um, and some really important things are happening. Again, as we mentioned in the top of the show, early voting begins this week. Yes. April 16th. And just a reminder, Janine, what are we doing Wednesday morning? Wednesday morning, we're all showing up. All the ladies, the women of Nashville, come out to um, early voting, along with the 100 Black Women and um, other organizations where you're black. If you're a part of another organization, um, obviously wear accent colors. But come out at 730 a.m. Howard School Building, and um, let's all vote together. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. And in other news, um, we got word. This, This whole flight was it mh7 uh mh uh, the air the flight 370 mm-hmm. i couldn't get that out 370 will, will they ever find it will the search ever end what is going on it <clears throat> literally changes almost hour to hour seems like the latest now they're saying that there are no underwater pulses being detected anymore they were sensing some things that they thought were from the black box they heard it then they didn't hear it and then they're like well the waves and the depth of the ocean can you know, cause some vibrations. They're not even sure. Well, they said now that they're going to stop with uh, some above water Mm -hmm. searching and they're going to send an underwater uh, deep sea a vessel. Right. So they're kind of working with the U.S. Navy and dragging, I guess, the ocean floor to figure out where the plane is, where, yes, um, where where anything from the plane um, is found. So this is kind of like, I think, our modern day Titanic, if you will, which is a little weird. Disappeared. Yes. We just just maybe disappear off the face of the earth. Um, and it may be years before anything is found. And our, our hugs, prayers, love, and support for sure go out to the families of those that um, mm-hmm. have missing loved ones that are mm-hmm. on that flight. And other crazy yes, news. about this gun situation? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? <laughs> well, before, you know, this is the greatest setup. <laughs> Let's talk about this shooting yesterday. Yes. At the shooting at the, at the Jewish synagogue. Yes. Okay. Three people, uh, I believe, were killed. Um, yeah, three people killed <clears throat> yesterday at a Jewish community center and Jewish retirement complex near Kansas City. Mm-hmm. And they have in custody a well-known and documented white supremacist and a former Ku Klux Klan leader mm-hmm. who was behind this. And, and for those of you who all uh, who may not know, the Ku Klux Klan was born in Tennessee, <clears throat> Pulaski, mm-hmm. just a yes, couple of hours Pulaski, from Tennessee. here. Uh, so supposedly he just went on a shooting rampage. Three are killed. He is in custody. Mm-hmm. More will come from that. And now let's talk guns, Janine. Yes. So this situation here in Tennessee, I don't know. Tennessee is becoming very Florida-esque to me mm. without the weather. <laughs> <laughs> and we know exactly what you're talking about. Yes. Loose guns. Yes. And uh, whole... what what is going on? Yeah, listeners, please, this is why you need to show up and vote yes. on Wednesday and in every other election, regardless if a president of the United States is being voted on or not. Why is that important? Because you elect congresspersons who are making decisions like they are now. Right. It has passed the Senate that you do not have to have a gun permit and can openly carry your gun wherever you go. And if you want to stand your ground, yes, you easily can. Tennessee is a stand Let's your ground state. Let's just bring it all together. State. And so that means if you don't have to have a gun permit, that means you don't have to have training, right? So you could like Correct. literally be fumbling and fidgeting with your Correct. gun when somebody startled you and like shoot somebody in the toe or the heart. I mean, And that just... also, let's also talk about background checks. Exactly. No background checks. So that means <laughs> all the um, unstable people, you know, can definitely have access to this. I, I heard a conversation the other day where some people were saying that this has a little spin on it, where it's really about being able to carry your gun on 
property like in your car and not necessarily in the workplace so there's you know you know we know how the political spin works um <laughs> somebody asked me what's the difference between spin and a lie and I was like, um, the way they're spelled, maybe. <laughs> or you know, one starts with an S let's, and one let's, starts with an L. Let's be fair. <laughs> let's actually define it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's let's okay. Mm-hmm. A spin is a lie that is dressed up to convince you that it is the truth. True. Thank you, Webster's. Yes. Give me my credit for All that. All right. One. <laughs> I wish we spin. had a clap button. Like, I, we get a clap. Right. Where are the sound effects? <laughs> in? The sound effects in here. Yeah. Thank you, Diane. But specifically, let's spell out. It is, um, what is it called? Hold on, where it is called the Open Carry Firearms Freedom Act. Yes, specifically Senate Bill twenty four twenty four. Yes, and it passed in the Senate with a twenty five to two vote. Mm-hmm. Again, I wish I knew who those. No were. background <laughs> checks, no training. <laughs> yes, no permit. Now, my understanding is this does not apply to felons. Same rules ap- apply to felons. But you know, the crazy thing is, some but of these, for how long? Yeah, clearly, right. Season. For how long? And then, really, honestly, you know, because I'm an advocate for people being able to vote, even if you are a felon. I know there are a lot of different programs out there about that. So. I, Sometimes when we're trying to protect ourselves from the bad people, we're the bad people. Yes, and don't realize it. Yes, well, and let's don't give a, let's, it. let's give a pause just for the mama side eye that you just gave. <laughs> <laughs> if that was that eye like that your mother would give you, now you know you right. are wrong. You, I'm not even going to say, I'm just going to give you the eye, so straighten up. <laughs> Every, Senate, House, Janine just gave you all the eye, the mama eye. We need you all to get it together. Please, people are dying at ridiculous rates already mm-hmm. taking guns illegally on the streets. Let's not make it even easier for them. So right. that's that's our little tip yes. today. We Thank can spend you. all day. I would say this to my producer here, Alicia. We, we clearly need a show, maybe a special show, discussing this uh, whole gun permit vote. But as we talk about crime and all that, we have a very special lady with us in the house. Diane Lance, everybody. She could be your first female district attorney here in Davidson County. Welcome, Diane. Thank you so much. I'm really glad to be here. Thanks to both of you. We're hey. happy to have you. How are you today? Doing great. Good, Doing great. Good. A little distressed by the firearms bill, though, as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are, are you able to share any thoughts about that? Or, or do um, you have, what, what are your thoughts? You My know. thoughts is the common sense that everyone else has. I mean, I really don't want to be passing someone in the grocery store with my children yeah. with a gun on their belt um, who shouldn't be having a gun. Right. That's and scary. something, I don't understand the thought that it's all the safer as long as it's out in the open. We have enough That's trouble in. Um, Davidson County getting control over those who aren't allowed to have firearms and and mm-hmm. keeping with the law on that, let alone having people walking around with them as it's, they please. It's wild, wild west right, in the South. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, we didn't have guns. They they passed, and I'm so proud of the restaurateurs locally, like Randy Rayburn, for instance, um, who really fought to not allow people to carry guns in restaurants. But it's okay that we just willy-nilly carry them anywhere else this doesn't the rationale i just don't weird. i don't understand weird so okay. then as a district attorney um and if elected you'd be our first female district attorney would this be an issue that would come before you and something that you would really have to deal with it um if there are repercussions from this well i mean there, there are two layers to that mm-hmm. the first layer is the district attorney joins other district attorneys across the state in the district attorney's conference and makes recommendations and can present legislation. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the district attorney has a role on that of weighing in to legislation and also creating um, as a joint entity mm-hmm. ideas for legislation. So that's the first layer. As, as for the second layer, obviously, if there's any violent crime involving a firearm or any violent crime, that's mm-hmm. going to land on the desk of your district attorney, which hopefully right. will be me. Right. Yes. Yeah. So how has how has the race been so far? I mean, you're you're up against a man who really is kind of bankrolling his own um, campaign in a sense, uh, Glenn Funk, and then you're you're up against Rob McGuire, who is currently in uh, the district attorney's office, and then you've done no doubt you have a, a very extensive history um, in law as well, uh, and and on the public platform, having recently left uh, the mayor's office to kind of come out and and full time in your campaign. How is the race going? Um, Because it's kind of like the race of the titans here. I mean, each of you all are pretty huge. How is that going for you? Well, it's it's interesting. And I said since day one that it's not a race, it's a sprint. Um, Most of the candidates have been running since about October. But no one knew that this position was coming available until 
early February, I believe it was. So right. it has been a, a sprint and we're just, I'm just sprinting hard and trying to get out there and meet as many people and let them know about the background and the very diverse and experienced background of 25 years that I'm going to bring to that job. So, and this is what, this is what I love about our show. Okay. Because we know we can go to your website and we can read all about you and we've seen you out there, but I, you know, we want to go into those moments where we don't often get to hear about. So I want to know when you found out that he was retiring, and what was your thought like? Was it, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do? Or now, you know, I'm thankful for his service, but maybe now is a chance for me to get in and make change. Like, what was your initial? First, no, 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 let me go back. How did you find out? Was it a text? Like, hey, Diane, did you hear this? Was it an email? Good question. It was a text. <laughs> we want the dirt. And absolutely, because that's how we get all of our juicy new information these days is by text. So I did get a text. And I had both of those reactions. I was really shocked and surprised. I had just been with Tori earlier that day. We've been talking about things that were important to me with domestic violence. And then I come to find out that he's leaving that position. And it was, it was a bit of a shock wave because a lot of the plans I'd been making in the mayor's office for how the city can improve our response to domestic violence were assuming certain players were still in place that were in agreement and ready to move forward on my plan. And so that was really concerning to me and other people who are equally concerned about what would happen if there was a new district attorney who hadn't maybe embraced our guidebook for how we need to make change, wouldn't, wouldn't embrace it that way. So I started getting a lot of phone calls from the nonprofit community, the legal community, encouraging me to run for district attorney. One important thing to to mention is that you have a strong history in advocating for uh, victims, doing a lot of development in the area of domestic violence. But as dis as district attorney, you would handle a lot more than just uh, domestic violence. So briefly share with us, because um, we have just a little <laughs> bit before the break, but briefly share with us what all will you bring to the table and can you handle the varied um issues and cases that would come to the office of the district attorney outside of domestic violence. Right. The the office handles a wide range of, of issues and they also get into the area of prevention. And one of the, probably the biggest thing that makes me different from the other candidates and what I bring to the table is that I have the unique experience of actually solving problems in our law enforcement and judicial systems. Mm -hmm. My work in the mayor's office was to tackle tough problems that those two systems face, um, whether it be problems that make it hard to for the case to travel through the system or make it especially complicated for victims or something unfair for the defendants. And so my work in the mayor's office, I've worked with the leadership of all those departments, such as the sheriff, the police chief, um, the district attorney, the head of probation, all of them, and judges working to make our system better and more user-friendly for those that are using it and take out some of the gaps in victim safety and take out some of the gaps in offender accountability. So while others may have traveled and continue to work in that system, I'm the candidate that got out and figured out what needed to be fixed with the help of a 100-member team that helped me do that and actually know how to do that because I've worked in that capacity for the last five years. Well, you well, all heard it right there. She, she can handle it. laid it out. <laughs> <laughs> no well, questions <laughs> after that. <laughs> and with both of the guys in here, they didn't even say it that well. No, they sure did. I mean, not that we're, like, showing any favoritism <laughs> no, or anything no, to, you know, the lady like here on Pumps and Politics. But, I mean, we're just saying she just, you know, stated it clearly. But we're going to talk with her just a little more about what she's going to bring to the table if elected, what sets her apart. And, of course, we have to ask her the few questions she needs. You know, we got to get the yes. first thought. Hey, we'll, we didn't tell her about that, but we'll right. surprise her with that in a little bit. <laughs> Everyone, stay tuned. We will be right back. <laughs> Come on. 
Today's a good day to grab your kids and hang out with them for an hour. Dance, walk, play a sport, or cook a healthy meal. Because just moving a little and eating better every day can help make you and your child healthier. Can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. We'll ball it up. Because we know how to hoop. We'll mess around. Because we know how to play. We'll drop it down. Because we'll we know how to dance. We'll veg it up. Veg it up. Search We Can online to find doable tips and activities that you can use every day to keep you and your kids healthy. Remember, that's We Can. A message from the Ad Council, HHS, and NIH's We Can program. Welcome back to Pumps and Politics. We are having a lot of fun this morning. And this is how we want it to be. Sometimes politics is, you know, it's so heavy and, and goes over your head sometimes and it's just so weighted. But we like to have a lot of fun. And, and of course, we have more pumps in the house today. I don't have all my pumps. I'm just, I'm going right. to tell them myself. I have my flip flops. I, I have I my flats too. Yes, it's on, been a long time. I have weekend. on flats too. <laughs> But you know, it's a metaphor. It is. It <laughs> yes. is. Represents the ladies. Yes. And we have a wonderful lady <laughs> with us in studio today, Diane Lance, a candidate for district attorney here. And again, we have to keep saying, if elected, will be the first woman district attorney. Um, filing in now after Toria Johnson. Tory Johnson announced his uh, retirement after many, many years of service. And um, Made a lot of headway, broke a lot of ground. Of course, a little controversy, then everything's clear. You know, it's no different than any other elected official's uh, history, you know. So there's a lot going on. Diane, um, we're talking with you. And we gave her a little, you know, we got to give her a little heads up about her surprise. All of our listeners, you know what it is. We got to play the word game. Yes. Uh, but before we get to that, we got to, you know, bring her on in a little more. We got to mm -hmm. massage her in a little more, Janine. Get, get a little more relaxed for it. So um, tell us about your endorsements. I noticed that you recently got an endorsement from Wynn. Who else has um, backed you and endorsed you? Yeah. So Wynn is Women in Numbers mm -hmm. um, and also was endorsed by Women for Tennessee's Future and have been endorsed by. I was going to say, Women for Tennessee's Future has a really interesting acronym. If you can think about it, it's <laughs> WTF. <laughs> and I went to one of their events, and I was like, they gave me a little sticker that said WTF, and I was like, I don't really know if I'm, how I feel about putting this on and what that also translates in other circles. <laughs> well, you're, you're exactly right, but it, they did that, from what I understand, intentionally, mm -hmm. because a group of um, strong women sat mm -hmm. down and they were like, what's going on what here? What the fool? Yeah, yeah I know. Well, why aren't there more <laughs> women in leadership positions? Uh -huh. So that's another endorsement. I have been endorsed by Andrea Conte and Great. Governor Bredesen, and um, which Big obviously yes. I'm very it's proud huge. of both those endorsements. And for those of you that know Andrea Conte, she's obviously married to Governor Bredesen, but she is truly the first lady mm -hmm. of not only yeah. um, Tennessee, but she has been the first lady of victims' rights in our mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm very proud of that since I've devoted so much of my career towards victim advocacy and services. And then most recently, I've been endorsed by Reverend Tex Thomas, which oh, I'm wow. oh, really Really proud of yes, <laughs> Tech. That is That's great. Pretty big. That's Some would call him the mayor of North Nashville. Yes, the mayor of North Nashville. <laughs> I mean, that is awesome. And tell us, um, those are some great endorsements. Tell us a little bit about what you did. Um, I was reading some information on your website, um, and which I think is great. What you did with domestic violence and kind of creating a center, if you will, for um, those victims to feel safe when they go to court. Talk to us a little bit about that project. I love to. I'm really excited about that project so I'm glad you asked that question so in we did a domestic violence study for two years involving over 100 people and one mm -hmm. of the biggest and strongest concerns is what happens to victims when they show up for court particularly on a domestic violence docket and what we observed and from watching court and from interviewing victims is how frightening that process is. They're in the same courtroom for hours on end, sitting with their offenders, near their offenders, um, and that's an intimidating process. When they go up to talk to the judge about an order of protection, they literally are standing shoulder to shoulder within mm -hmm. inches from each other. And you can, when you're sitting in courtroom and you watch this, you can see some of the women visibly shaking mm -hmm. while they're standing there and suddenly mm -hmm. unable to communicate. There are issues of, you, we've saw plenty of examples of offenders intimidating the victims in court, whether it be from looks they were giving, texts they were sending in court, 
all of that. We found out a lot of victims don't eat breakfast before they come to court, and then they're mm. sitting there for hours on end. It is a wow. ugly and awful process. So it's mm. not surprising that near the majority of cases are dismissed because victims do not come to court. Who would want to go to court right. um, and be treated that way. So what we've done is bu- building out, starting at the end of the summer, it will be created a victim resource center where victims will go there um, to a separate area of the courthouse that's going to feel like your living room or your kitchen, a, almost a sanctuary within the courthouse to wait for their court time and to wait till they need to go upstairs. And it's just going to be wonderful. We'll have breakfast. We'll have 10 to 12 advocates added to our system to provide the services they need, the referrals, mm-hmm. the educational information about, you know, what's the effect on children? Um, how Are you at risk for being killed from your offender? Do some lethality risk assessment so they know where they stand. All of that type of services will be provided there Mm -hmm. and hoping to make it an experience that is helpful, Mm -hmm. not just frightening. Wow. Good. That's great. What kind of response have you received from, um, from this effort? The community's really excited about it. Mm-hmm. Um, when I go out and I talk about it, I can, you, you can tell when you talk to a woman if they have had experience with domestic violence, whether personally or with a family member. When I say what I've devoted my life to is mm-hmm. the victimization, especially of women, and when you talk, when I talk to them about this victim resource center, it is an exciting prospect because anyone that's been to court and seen what it's like. Um, for the last 20 plus years should have known it needed to be changed and the fact that it took this long to change is really shocking to me one more uh, quick question before we get into our get into the word game Uh, we have just a few minutes literally a few minutes left in the show one thing we always we always ask and we want to know especially as you have those that you are running against what is it about you that we don't know already or that we can't go on your website and read, or that we wouldn't hear in your political speeches, you know, or when, or, or in your responses, you know, because you, you're thinking of things that, you know, this is why I'm the best candidate. And those are the things about you that we know. What are things about you that we don't know? What do you do at home? What do you like to do? What is family like? You have a beautiful family. We see it on your. I website. do, I do. So, I'm what ticks you off? What, what makes <laughs> Diane mad? What makes her happy? Right. Cupcakes? You know, I mean, what you know, what what excites you? You know, well, that's a lot of questions. What excites me? What makes me mad? I mean, there's a there's a long host of things. So I'll tell you a little bit about me personally. I'm married. I've been married for a really long time. I've got two kids, 12 and 14. I have two cats um, that can drive you crazy because they are they just can't get enough love. And I have a dog who's petrified today because of the storm. So he has to oh, wear yeah. he has mm-hmm. to wear a jacket around him today that oh. hugs him all day oh. so he can feel safe and secure. What's so his name? His name is George. He's a oh, he's a George. huge George. a huge Hugs poodle I got from the pound, oh. and um, he's very frightened today. So um, that's kind of my personal. I'm cry. I'm like, <laughs> I know, I know. George. It's just George. It's just, George. It's just pitiful. <laughs> but um, but you know what what um, what makes me mad? Gosh, um, I have to think about that. I'm, I'm generally very even keeled. I'm a pretty reasonable person. Um, oh gosh, my friend is sitting here beside me, writing to me. What, she's what like, I know mad? what makes you well, mad. Well, Let me I'm, help you out. <laughs> you know, she's right. So I've gotten ticked off in a forum or two. Um, and what really makes me mad is when. Uh, when the underdog isn't being treated right. Um, mm. it, it really bothers me. And when I look through my career as I was coming in, coming into this race, it really has been a 25-year career of stepping in when the underdog doesn't have a voice and being that voice. And that that's, that's what drives me most every day of my career in my personal life. I mean, if I see someone doing something wrong out and about, I'm the first to go over there and tell them exactly what they need to improve on (laughs) and not do that again. Um, I don't like getting speeding tickets, but I don't get mad. I hit someone's mailbox by accident the other day. So, you know, um, that was was bad. So I felt bad about myself. So apparently my driving skills can improve a little bit. Um, So that's, that's the skinny on me. Um, need to improve my driving <laughs> skills and um, love to serve people who need someone to step in there and serve them. Got it. Well, I appreciate the transparency on the driving skills. <laughs> I, I'm I'm there. Okay. Well, we have. Okay, we're we're getting the rapid. Okay. Oh, ooh, we're over. Yeah, I know. Well, can, can I throw? Can I throw one in? Wait, can, okay. Can we, 
scandal. Yeah, come on, ladies. Scandal. What do you say about that? The only word on my mind is win. So any word association is going to be win <laughs> this <laughs> election. <laughs> with no scandal attached. Well, all right, exactly. with no scandal attached. No right, scandal right, attached. I like it. All right, I we'll like let it. you. Ooh, you got away. So yes. lucky today. Yes. She was clever. She yes. was clever. We yes. will have you back for sure, Diane. We had so much fun. And please give me your name again. Mine, I'm Tammy Walker. Tammy. Okay. Everybody, her friend Tammy. We love Tammy. Tammy, you've got to come back. Please come back. we got to put you on the mic. <laughs> She's a lot funnier than I am. <laughs> you all are funny and funny together. I love yes. it. It was such a pleasure to have you all uh, out with us this morning. Again, don't forget to vote. Beginning this Wednesday with early voting, election day is uh, May 6th. Mm-hmm. Diane Lance is on the ballot. So if you liked what you heard today, if you feel more informed, we hope that you do. If you feel inclined to vote for her, be sure to look for her name on the ballot. We will be running a marathon on Tuesday, the day before early mm-hmm. voting. So if you want to meet all the other candidates, be sure to tune in. Everyone, thank you so much for listening. And tune in for the bench press. The two-hour power I had to put that plug in before I got in, tr- in trouble. Okay, I'm getting in trouble now. Okay, Twitter. everyone, have a great week. Talk to you next week. For real news, big headlines, and the latest in political talk, tune in every Monday for Pumps and Politics at 8 a.m. Central.